Well, I always say that to live as if the universe is in your favor. Now, the only reason that it doesn't appear that way to a lot of us is because we've been conditioned and hypnotized into believing that God is some angry guy sitting on a cloud somewhere and he's throwing lightning bolts, uh, he, whatever that means, throwing lightning bolts down at you and he's keeping score on whether you've done the right thing or the wrong thing and if you've done the wrong thing you're going to be punished by God and then you're going to spend all of eternity in this one place. Now, the principle, the law in the universe is free will. So that intelligence, that objective intelligence, that observer that's observing all of this into place, that loving intelligence, honors free will. So if you're absolutely happy being unhappy, it will organize more events in your life for you to feel unhappy because you are a creator all the time. So we're not punished for our sins. We happen to be punished by our sins, which means we're punished by our own attitudes because we are responsible as a creator. We are, we are a, a, a snowflake or a raindrop from a greater mind. And we are yeah, uh, this made of the same stuff. So when people believe in those false premises that they're, they'd have no power, that the universe is an angry um, vindictive, insecure God that um, is, is going to punish them for some reason. We know without a doubt that there's biological effects as a result of that. As an example, people who are infected with AIDS, the people who accepted their disease because it was a punishment by God, they're their T helper cells, their white blood cells that were to combat the disease were much lower. The people who saw God as benevolent and, and loving, their T cells were much higher. So in a sense, it's up, it's up to us in terms of removing the masks of the ignorance that we've been conditioned into believing in. The end result of that, again, is that we feel incredibly empowered by possibility. Now, your body responds <clears throat> to either experiencing a certain level of freedom, a certain level of responsibility, a certain level of lovingness. And if you accept that the universe is in your favor, and that is your free will, then in fact, you begin to experience the fruits of that. If you, if you believe in something else, but you're bad or you know, you're guilty or you've done things wrong and you'll never be forgiven, and this is a, an unconscious conditioning that happens for most people. It's happening behind the scenes of our awareness. Then, by free will, you experience the universe as that way. So, we're quantum observers here. And so, all the information that's coming out now, what you're doing, people who are interested in disseminating the information and making it available, is causing people to sit down and say to themselves, I've got to rethink this. <laughs> and what, is re what, what does the word repent mean? It means to rethink, to think again. So it's time to think again. It's time to rethink. It's time to, for us to begin to, by, by reason and by just contemplation, to say to ourselves, um, maybe all of this information was interpreted by a group of men that had another agenda. And when you start seeing through that, you know, people are going to start experiencing a tremendous amount of uh, freedom, and the, and the world should change as a result of it. When people start paying attention to elevated emotions, when they're able to cultivate um, loving kindness or compassion or some elevated emotion, that the energy moves from those survival centers and you start, it starts sitting in another place there. Now that's really key because it tells us then that our body is changing because there's a shift in consciousness or a shift in our emotional states. And, and that elevation of emotion that, or that elevated emotion or that elevated consciousness begins to cause us to become more godlike, to become more divine, to no longer live as an, as an animal who's trying to compete or get ahead. It, it, we tend to slow down. We're more present. We, we pay attention to the details a little bit more. I do my best in all areas of my life. I have had many dark nights of the soul, but you know, those are opportunities to look to see if what your beliefs are are supporting you and can you 
look at yourself and begin to make choices that maybe nobody else is making. Mm -hmm. Because when we decide to make choices, we look around to see, is anybody else making these choices? And when it's outside of convention, nobody's making those choices, Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, to do that, a lot of times you're considered foolhardy or insane or in some way, uh, you know, you're losing your mind. And in a sense, you are. You're losing the familiar mind. And so when we make those choices to step outside of the box, there aren't many, uh, there isn't much feedback in our environment to reaffirm our identity. So a lot of people return back to the familiar world, and even though the relationship doesn't work or the, the career isn't going well, at least their the job, at least that they have something to remind themselves of who they think they are, who they are. And so for me in my life, I was raised with some um, two really great simple parents. And my father was uh, an immigrant from Italy, and and he just believed that if you provided enough for your children, enough opportunity, they'd find their way. So, in a sense, I was blessed by two parents that were very simple. And um, for me, I, you know, I I reached a point where I was philosophically understanding a lot of the things that were important to me, but. Um, you know, I got run over by a truck, and that was the beginning of my, you know, rebirth. Where I had to take everything that I learned, you know, after I broke six uh, six bones in my spine, and you know, facing paralysis and everything else, if it actually was true. Now, unfortunately, most of us wait for that w- moment of awakening to begin to make changes, uh, and so that began my journey in looking at. Uh, the way things really are and I had to see what I didn't believe any longer what I no longer wanted to put my attention behind and where you put your attention is where you put your energy and then decide what I did want to believe actually things that I wanted to know about and investigate and so the journey for me has been about not only just understanding the concepts theoretically but then to begin to execute them in my life because in a sense I'm a pragmatist I want to know that that if this works let's let's see if it works let's experiment in some way so I have a great group of people that are support people that share the same vision um, and a great family and um, a great life and so we work uh, diligently in um, getting our behaviors to match our intentions, mm-hmm. to getting our actions equal to our thoughts, to be uncompromising to certain things. And if you can maintain that with a certain level of flexibility to see what's working and not what's working, then you can create <clears throat> not just in mind, but there is an element of taking action to see how you can organize a life that you feel like you're contributing in many ways, whether it's in nature, whether it's in art, whether it's in serving people, uh, whether it's healing people. Um, I think at the end of your life, when it's all said and done, the only thing that matters is how you made a difference. So uh, uh, it's taken me some time to really gr- you know, grasp that and believe in it. But uh, one of the greatest things that uh, I get to see is when I see people transform, uh, whether they're from Japan, whether they're from Mexico, whether they're from... Uh, South America, whether they're from um, Europe, they all look the same. Transformation looks exactly the same to me. And and so uh, I think that when you then set up your environment and it begins to reflect your mind, now you're in a good place because now you're no longer being distracted by the chaos of your environment. You've organized the space that represents your level of mind and so you can relax into that and begin to create again. Tell us about the power of us getting together with like-minded people. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> you know, the quantum model of entanglement says that the moment you and I share an experience, we share an emotion and because we share an emotion, we can then relate with each other because we understand each other's experience. And if it, uh, emotion is energy in motion, then when we share some type of bond energetically, just like a sodium ion or chloride ion, we are bound beyond space and time. So the more people that share the same level of mind mm-hmm. and share an elevated state, in a sense, are, is like a network of cells functioning together. 
that is bond bonded beyond space and time. So the quantum model of entanglement says if you do something to this photon over here that if they're bonded in some way or correlated, when you affect this one, this one over here will be affected immediately and it'll happen faster than the speed of light and in some implicit state they're connected in the invisible, right? So if you have enough people <clears throat> that share the same level of mind, the same consciousness, they share the same emotion or the same energy, then they have a unity of consciousness that's pretty much working as a single-minded organism. Now, that is very threatening to a lot of, you know, bigger uh, organizations, whether it's corporations or government or whatever, because it represents people in a state of unity that no longer is living for their own self-interest, but actually to see if we can make the species do something really great and, and into perpetuity, you know, into, into, a, into a future. So when you have a group of individuals that share the same mind, that share the same information, that share the same desires, and you inspire them, well, that feeds that energetic field, and it becomes a, a, a collective consciousness. And as we know, collective consciousness affects pretty much everything.